This is the pivot where we talk about topics that are central to our game. Now, joining us, I had the pleasure of introducing ESPN host and basketball analyst and just an incredible voice in the space of women's basketball, LaChina Robinson. So thank you for joining us. And we have the privilege of being joined by another amazing voice in women's basketball from the college level all the way up to the WNBA and everything in between. She's a writer for Her Hoop Stats. Thank you for joining us as well, Anila Khan. Ta appreciate you guys for taking the time. Thank you for having us. Yes, <laughs> yes thank nope. you for having us. Of course, of course. Okay, let's jump right on in. So... We all saw the WNBA offseason, a lot of movement. We saw Candace Parker, one of our not notable uh, players, go from Chicago to the Vegas Aces. Then we also saw Brianna Stewart jump to New York. Now the Aces and the Liberty are having a pretty solid season so far. I think it's safe to say. Connecticut, of course, give them some flowers there. But the Aces are already looking like they're going to solidify the West. How do you feel about super teams and are they good or bad for the WNBA at this point? LaChina, I'm starting with you. Yeah, Savannah, I really enjoyed the super team narrative. Uh, I know that it depends on where you stand in this conversation, whether or not you really enjoy it. Like I've had some conversations with teams that are not super teams and they're like, oh, we're so tired of hearing about New York and uh, Las Vegas. But from an interest point in, in the WNBA interest standpoint, you know, it's, it's bringing so much conversation. I don't see how anyone else in the league in at least in a year mm -hmm. is going to catch up with a team like the aces that has four number one picks or the New York Liberty that has two former MVPs on their roster. And in one off season added three all-stars, which has never happened in the history of the WNBA. So I've enjoyed it. Um, I, I don't think it's great for competition, right? Like I, I don't want New York and Vegas to run the table on the season. I mean, they've already lost, but I don't even want them to, to win every game from here on out. Yes. I absolutely believe that Connecticut and New York, excuse me, in Washington will be contenders, um, along with several other teams, Dallas, look at the season they're having, um, love what Latricia Trammell's doing there, but oh, Overall, I like the narrative. I think it's been fun and uh, a good conversation piece for the league. Personally, um, I love it too, just because in the major uh, New York area, I've seen a lot of more media coverage than I normally do too. And I just love the fact that recently it came to my attention that Theo Penson of the Dallas Mavericks was having a discussion with his uh, friends and they were, you know what the, they were actually discussing the players. They actually knew who the Aces players were. They actually knew the Liberty players. And I was like, yes, this is really nice because you're actually engaging. You're actually creating conversation and you're actually encouraging more fans to come out to support the league. And I, I was just loving it. And I think um, it's good for the W, but I agree with LaChina Robinson in the sense that it doesn't do great for all the other teams in terms of um competition in terms of like making people want to stay until the because they're all, they're all going to be like oh the aces are already up to 20 okay uh this is this isn't great i'm just gonna leave now or i'm just gonna end my league like i'm gonna leave and then go watch something else or go to something else so that part is hard so i agree it's a little bit harder for competition but i just do love the fact that it drives people forward let's move on because uh on a bit more of a serious note um, Brittany Griner and Phoenix, her team, they were kind of harassed at an airport and it was pretty devastating to watch. If anybody's seen the footage, they're harassed by a YouTube personality, hesitate to call them that. Um, and we know as people who have followed the WNBA, who talk about it all the time, that charter travel has been an ongoing topic in the league, but how much of an issue um, is player security, especially in a sensitive situation like this? And what would you like to see moving forward with China? It has to be a priority, quite honestly. We're talking about a women's professional sports league. And, um, you know, I think when most people think about charters in their mind, they think about luxury, right? 
right? Oh, you can just get on a charter. You can skip the airport. You can, you know, have this intimate setting and, um, you know, you don't have to worry about getting your luggage and all of these things. And that is absolutely not why WNBA players want charter. It 100% has to do with safety. When you look at what happened to Brittany Griner, first and foremost, it's sad. It really is because what Brittany had to experience being wrongfully detained for 10 months in Russia is bad enough. But then to come home and work really hard to return to the court. I mean, she looks fantastic between the lines. She is playing very high level basketball right now. And for those of us that have, and I say us, but it's really Phoenix, Brittany's team and the WNBA to have had time to figure out how to best protect Brittany and this happen and we're not even one fourth of the way through the season. It's disappointing. It really, really is. So I think it's up to the ownership of these teams. Some owners have said they are, they are willing to pay and they have the the money. If they do, then they should be allowed to period point blank. So the rules need to change in the CBA that if you have the ability to charter your players, you should, you should be able to rightfully do so. I agree. Um, and the Phoenix Mercury owner, who uh, Matt Ishba, who recently uh, got control of their ownership back in February for both Suns and Mercury can't afford it. His net worth is $6.6 billion. I would first start with the Phoenix Mercury slowly, just because I think Brittany Griner, yes, I agree. She does char- deserve charter, uh, deserves charters. And I agree, do agree that all the players of WM players do do. Uh, do degree uh, do deserve uh, chartered flights, but um, I, I, she's more the type of person where she wants her whole teammates to come mm-hmm. and and fly with her just because she feels a little, I think, a little unsafe right now. I think it's hard for her to fly charter. I think it's hard for her. So yes, I do agree, but very slowly because I do agree some team owners can afford it, some can't. Thank you so much for having this impactful conversation with me today. I appreciate both of your work and let's continue for ourselves, the media to grow the game. Um, And thank you for joining me on The Pivot. 